Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today. The new Toriko. Oh my god, dude, yo. Toriko. It's like a drug, man. I Every time a chat comes out, I can't wait for the next one. Because to me, like right now, this story has been so phenomenal. It, it's blowing my mind, right? Now. It's blowing my mind in a good way, obviously. And the thing about this is that this chapter, even though the only action was literally a finger poke, it was still a chapter that I genuinely in, enjoyed. And it was the whole psychological transition of, or at least the beginning stages of Midra's psychological transition when he gets his first hot meal. And when he, for the first time, experiences charity, something given to him just because. Human compassion. Something that, he, something that he's never experienced since his birth. And, of course, we have people who always want to knock Torko. It's about food. It's about food, bro. But I'm like, wait a second. Hold on, hold on. You go a week without food. And a week without anyone offering you food. Then come back to me. Then come back to me, all right? Because food is one of the staples of our survival, of the human species. I mean, I mean, it's very simple. We have oxygen. We need oxygen. We need water. We need shel we, we need shelter. We need social communication. We need food. So, like, you you, you can't tell me, oh, I, I can't read this series because it's about food. The fuck? The hell yeah, you can't. All right, food. I mean, people take t p people really take it for granted. Honestly, you go a week, two weeks, three weeks without food. Now all of a sudden it's a different story. Now all of a sudden you realize the importance of food. With that being said, let me move forward. The beginning of the chapter, very deep. The whole psychological transition of uh, Midoriya's child, the beginning stages of it. Because we know how it ends up, and the way it ends up is what we see at the end result. Where a few hundred years later, it's basically Midra, he's much older, fighting against Ichiru, and kills Ichiru. And his character will progress even forward in the future because of the fact that he's still alive. Now the thing here is that, at, the, at this beginning stage, again, it's the whole thing about how he's never had compassion towards him. He's always had to fight to attain food. He's always had, he's always had, had a struggle just to survive, and here is this woman that he has no idea who she is, and out of the kindness of her own heart, is giving him food and lots of it, and that completely altered his previous psyche to where he's actually a lot more open now, and not only that, not only that, but when. He said, for the, cause it, after, cause when he was, uh, like after he, uh, had that first spoonful of soup, he, uh, when he went back to sleep, he had that dream of the people stealing his food, and then, like, he was reaching out and he was crying. And then he turns around, there's a table full of, there's a table full of food right there. And he reached, and then he actually, um, you know, goes to that, uh, for a bowl of soup, and he burns his tongue, and then we have Froze, she's like, don't worry, it's not going anywhere, it's all for you. And when he drinks that soup and he says, so this is what a hot meal tastes like. I'm like, really? I'm like, damn. Like, the, 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 the things people take for granted. Go two weeks without a hot meal. Go two weeks. Go two weeks without a hot meal. And when you have your first, I mean, when you have your next hot meal, you're going to realize what you're missing out. Like, seriously. The things people take for granted. Because the, the beginning part of the chapter really made me think about just the importance of something that we're used to because it's given to us on a regular basis. We just go and we buy and we eat it and that's it in the story. But in this case where we have this kid who's been in a uh, perpetual war for since his birth, a constant struggle for survival for the first time experiencing these emotions experiencing something in such a positive direction charity 
out of the goodness of her own heart, frozen food, here you go. And seeing this ultimate predator just give way because of simple charity. And it even says, and of course, Mitsutoshi, fantastic narration. He's saying how the lights, like the uh, like the smell of the grass, the uh, you know, like the light in the sky, the emotion in his heart, his heartbeat. Midara never forgot that. He never forgot that day. It stuck with him forever. And that's some deep stuff, man. That's some deep stuff. But just, just if you're gonna take one thing out of it, just take the fact that we take a lot of things for granted. That's for sure. That's for damn sure. So, so that's the first part. Deep, lovely, just fantastic. The second part was when the whole meeting between Midara, Ichiryu, and Jiro, and, and it was cool because it was like a family gathering. Like, because because Froze is the god of shafts. Akasia is the god of the, of the uh, Bushuki god. Like, he is, like, the, these guys are the gods of the Toriko world. And, I mean, as far as you know, because we haven't seen anyone placed on their same caliber, at least in terms of legends. Maybe in the future, I mean, well, maybe in their timeline, there may be some beings more powerful, but we don't know. Either way, when it comes to, like, the legend, because he's the one who found the ingredient god, Akasia. And she was the one who cooked it and who served it to the people of the world and all the war stopped right in there. And that, and that led to the whole trend that we see today of a human species that is united for the sole purpose, well, for the main purpose of just seeking out more, better, and, you know, greater ingredients. That's what kickstarts it all, just finding God and cooking God. But... Seeing these two individuals, Froze Sama and Akasia, how they're acting like a legitimate family. She's the wife, he's the husband, and they have their three sons Ichiryu, Jiro, and now Midara. And by the way, all of them were uh, foster kids, so orphans, so their names were, were given to them by their foster parents. And like it was just very nice. It was very warming. It was a very warming feeling. Like the first two parts of the chapter are actually very warming. Uh, the middle more so. Uh, again, the first part was a lot more deep, a lot more complex. But this part was just uh, you know very warming, very nice to see, very refreshing. Because and then it's it's ironic how this warming feeling that I'm getting and that you guys may be also feeling too is occurring in a flashback in the middle of this ridiculous battle between these two guys, which is also a flashback. So it's, it's basically a flashback in a flashback, but still, just knowing we're, just knowing that this warming feeling, just knowing that this sense of family gets split apart by Midera, by, for, by, for some odd reason, we don't know what stems to that, we don't know what leads to his, uh, you know, descent, but either way, just knowing that this warm feeling is gonna be shattered in the future, it's like, fuck, like, fuck. Oh my God, lead to what we see in the main flashback of just Midara, hungry space, and you know, each of you, my naughty world. Like I should have killed you then. I'm like, and you guys were like this in the past. What the fuck? So it's 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 warming, but it's heavy. It's warm, but it's very heavy, very heavy. But it was cool. It was cool. And then the last part of the chapter. That also had just deep shit to it. I'm like, what? we have so after we see like Jiro and Ichiyu and Midara, like, like they're just fucking around and you know like they're just doing stuff, uh, you know, young teenage boy stuff, just you know having fun, like you know just you know, like yeah, like noogies and shit, just, just, just doing crazy stuff. And what we have here is Akasia finally. Well, we have Froze finally confront Akasia about. The situation and he mentions pear now this called me off guard all right this called me mega off guard because what we have is that she says how to go and so she she asks him about the war and then he says okay so the war is not stopping anytime soon but i need to stop because it's my responsibility because i'm because i'm the one who found the gourmet cells i'm the one who founded this stuff and it's led to this uh this perpetual war so I need to stop it. 
And what he says after that is stunning. It's, it's stunning. It's stunning because it threw me off so bad. Because he said, I heard from Pear. And I have it right here, right? Because I had to see this page. He said, I heard from Pear. It said that it said that in some few years, in the near future, a creature called the Four Bees is going to become active. And the sun will wane. And she means the the solar eclipse. Then, she, then he says, the Nitro are planning to use the four beasts to kidnap a large number of humans. And then he says that I think I'm going to send each of you to fight against the four beasts. So, three things in this thing threw me the fuck off. I'm like, whoa. Pause. Pause the video game. Time out. Time out, man. Whoa! Wait a second. So, first thing, Pear. Pear is a is the exact same name of Acacia's soup dish. In his um, you need in in his full course, Pear. That is the soup dish, and that is found in the it's of course in the Grimming World. Um, in, um that massive tree. That we saw, um, the birth cry tree, right? Yeah, yeah, the birth cry tree. So, assuming that it's the same pair, he's saying as if a pair can talk, as if like this ingredient has intellect and can speak to humans. Furthermore, this brings on stage two. Apparently, pair, uh, 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 apparently, pair. Has precognition up to Wazoo and predicted that A, there be, there's gonna be a solar eclipse, and B, before then, the four beasts is gonna attack the human world. An ingredient, the soup dish, not even the main course, not even the fish dish, not even dessert, the soup. Now, of course. When you take a look at the birth cry tree, the reference, of course, being to the tree of life in the Bible, and then you could say that Pear is kind of like God speaking to Acacia. Of course, this is not this. Obviously, this is whole new scale, duh, because this is Toriko, right? We always go big. We go bigger than Jesus. We go bigger than Jesus in Toriko. And the thing about it is that, like, like that to me, I, I find it so fascinating because how can an ingredient have an intellect. How can it, how can it, well, what I mean intellect, I mean in the sense that it can actually talk and communicate with humans, probably telepathically, not only that, but have precognition and predict events in the future. How does that work exactly? So, so th that's major, those two things right there. And then the third thing, the Nitro are utilizing the four beasts. Wait a second, hold on. Now, could that tie in the fake Froze? Because fake Froze was hinted to be the person to control the four beasts. Now, that person, fake Froze, was known as Joel before, and now Joel is fake Froze. So, you know, fake Froze. So, does that mean that fake Froze has ties to the Nitro? Does that mean that fake Froze is a Nitro? That has Ian Acacia's full course and has gained these unique powers? Does that mean that fake Froze is some kind of like, because you know about the whole space thing, it may be something extra uh, extraterrestrial? I mean, because I've always hit, I've, I've always assumed that the Nitro themselves are extraterrestrial. Because that's my personal, that's my personal take. The Nitro, because remember in the Grim, in the Grimmy Pyramid, when they had these carvings in the pyramid, we would see like these different planets in the in in those carvings. So I'm thinking Nitro, outer space, probably. Like they came in like their space gourmet ships. I, I, I don't know exactly, but still, it's fascinating. Like uh, that's extraordinarily fascinating. This is totally God. I need to start doing more total discussion. My God, it's mind blowing sometimes. Seriously, and 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 so, but see that I can't really make it fair. I can't go any further when it comes to my uh, when it comes to my 
uh, insight on that because all we know is that the Nitro that like that's all we know. I mean, granted, we and also we don't we we know that there are different types of Nitro too. We learned that at the beginning or middle of this arc, the Cookie Island arc. So like the, the thing about it is that it's just that they controlled the four beasts to gather humans. Now again, there were hints that the Nitro consumed humans. Uh, uh, uh. Again, the plot thickens, man. It's a good flashback. This is a great flashback. And then it ends off with a high, super high note. Now, I don't know if Mitsutoshi reads my stuff, but when we see this sidebar, he says, God and Beyond, dot, dot, dot. Now, I had a chapter review called God and Beyond. Literally, the same, the same exact title. So... I'm gonna throw it out there in case of, uh, I don't know, Mitsutoshi. If you do watch my reviews, and that'll be, I'll be, that'll be huge for me because I'm a huge fan of your work. Tori Garping is an amazing series. All I can say is keep on doing what you're doing. All right, that's simple. I, I mean, he may not ever see this. I'm just saying, I love Tori and then this chapter no exception. And then mind you. Um, there's actually like this scar across Acacia's skull, like this massive scar. And is that a birthmark? Did he get that in combat? I, I don't know exactly. We have no idea. But either way, because we we've, we've always seen him with this uh, bandana around his head, sometimes a turban. But now we see his forehead, and there's a huge scar on his forehead, massive. So. I'm gonna assume combat because that because that scar it's shaped irregularly, so I would assume combat. But again, we go so the last page of the chapter is where we have Akasa and he's talking about you know the solar eclipse and that's when God is going to appear and I need your power to cook it and then because we have to stop all this war and then he says I need to head to the furthest land and that's when we see that sidebar God and beyond. So. That whole beyond part, to me, when I did, when I did that, that chapter review, I was assuming, okay, space, maybe space. Like, like we're going on space escapades and shit. Like, we're going to go outside of this planet for some odd reason. We don't know why. Probably, well, no, for not, for food, for ingredients. Duh. That's totally cool. It's just that, why? Is God, maybe God existed, maybe, maybe the eclipse creates like some kind of portal to some place in space where God resides. I don't know. Maybe even another dimension. I'm just throwing stuff out there. It's just that why does he have to say I need to go to the furthest place? Notice how we know the locations of all with the exception of the um, hors d'oeuvre. We do not know. I mean, we know the ingredients of uh, almost all of Acacia's full course uh, dishes with the exception of the hors d'oeuvre and the main, you know, and the main course. God, he actually, that reminded me. Yeah, when I backtrack, when I said the whole soup thing, I meant the meat dish. All right, that's what I meant, because the main course is God. But either way, the thing about it is that maybe that eclipse has something to do with going outside the planet, because he says the furthest place and God and beyond. What is beyond God? Well. The creators of God, the origin of God, because God is an ingredient. So if it's an ingredient, it must have an origin somewhere. I don't know. But the fact is that because I don't know, I'm like super psyched now. Because seriously, like, like he's setting it up where it's going to be some ridiculous, crazy reveal. And it's going to be like, oh, my God. Like, literally, oh, my God. Like, whoa, you found God. And God was where? The furthest plate? Like, the, oh no, the furthest land? Where is that? So, I, I'm just, the chapter I thought was just an amazing, yeah, an amazing chapter. And you may say you're kind of, you're raising the grade a little bit too much. No, I don't think so. Because the chapter hits a lot of levels. Very little action, but it didn't need it whatsoever. Because it hits a lot of levels. Someone asked me, is Toriko right now your favorite shonen? My answer was yes. Yes, yes, bro. It's hitting so many levels. In 
the ch in even in chapters where you think they're not gonna cover a lot, they're not, they're not gonna touch on a lot. They do. They he he really does, Mitsutoshi. So I'm digging it heavy, and I really I actually want them to stick on course with the flashback. If he goes and if if he goes back and forth between the fight and the flashback, that may mitigate both the fight and the flashback. So since he's on the flashback, stick with the flashback. Because now I'm fully immersed. I am in. I can't wait for a flashback chapter. Alright, and I've seen too much Naruto, but I can't wait for a flashback chapter. So, oh man. Wow, okay, but I'm done. King Lightning. Be sure, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.